Hello everybody, welcome back on my channel. My name is Vanessa and I make videos about music, productivity and health. In today's video, I want to talk about a very personal experience I had with hypnotherapy. As you might know, I did the Trump to USA International Hub competition last year and I had a few problems playing in the first round and I also had a few problems with my memory in my last competitions and in my last uh, recitals and I was always looking for different methods to approach this problem and after my final recital last year a teacher of mine, my orchestra teacher, told me about a colleague from the London Symphony Orchestra who tried hypnotherapy and it completely changed his life and I really wanted to try it um, as he said that it was very life-changing for this person and in this video I want to talk about why I did the hypnotherapy um, how the hypnotherapy worked for me, what results I had and if I would recommend hypnotherapy for musicians. If you saw my video um, about my experience at the International Hub Competition in Bloomington, um, if you haven't, I will link it here, then you can watch it. And you might know from this video that I experienced um, that I couldn't really concentrate in the first round and I had a f so many mistakes that I never did in my life and I didn't knew how to approach this problem, how to keep myself focused. And I had the same problem actually in my last year's recital. And it's just something that built up over the years, I think, because I never really learned how to really memorize. And then I started to like memorize a lot of my pieces and not one or two. And then um, it was, hard for me to play them all by memory and I also had some bad experiences which was just because I was I think not very well prepared but for the America competition I've played my pieces so much for the first round at least I memorized them I could write it down I knew every tone I knew every pedal change I knew everything about the pieces and still it was not possible for me to play in a way that I would say that mistakes are not interrupting the performance and they were always interrupting my performance. And I always blamed it on my preparation level, that I'm not well prepared, and that I had no experience playing the pieces for an audience. But basically I did this with the pieces for my competition and I played them over and over and I tried different memory methods and so on, but nothing worked. And so I was really desperate to find the answer or maybe a solution, um, how I can feel better playing from memory by on stage. And when I heard about hypnotherapy, I was very curious about it. And then I did my research um, because my teacher got the contact of the hypnotherapist his colleague went to, and um, it's quite expensive. So I paid around 200 pounds for one session and I had five sessions in total which is a lot of money for me and I had to work for this money for about half a year um, and then I had it saved up. Um, I think there are also hypnotherapists that are more expensive and there are hypnotherapists that are cheaper but I just wanted to try this um, hypnotherapist that got recommended to me. And I said, okay, Vanessa, you are going to spend about 800 to 1,000 pounds on this therapy. If it works brilliantly, if it doesn't work, you know that you tried it. And yeah, that's how I prepared for the hypnotherapy sessions. Before I had my first hypnotherapy session, the hypnotherapist offered a short chat about why you want to work with her or what your issues are and I explained to her that I have this problem um, playing from memory on stage and sometimes also in my room and if she could help me with that and she said yes um, we can try and she taught me a little more about hypnotherapy what she does is more of like talking and also different um, methods she's using for each client 
I will not like lie down there um, the whole hour where I have this hypnotherapy session and I was just like okay um, cool I will try it and she also said that normally hypnotherapy are four to five sessions sometimes you have more sessions if you have bigger problems um, or more trauma and sometimes there you don't need as many sessions for that the sessions were kind of the same except of the first session so in the first session she asked me questions about my general life and how i'm feeling on a day-to-day -day basis um, about my family, how I got raised, um, my background, why I wanted to become a harpist and um, uh, a lot of like belief questions um, which were for example um, I'm a good person or um, I uh, do everything I can for example, these questions and how likely I am to believe them or not. And I always had to um, say on a scale from 1 to 10 how much this is true for me or not. In the sessions, we always worked on beliefs and emotions. And we had one belief and uh, some other emotions in um, different sessions. Um, I didn't feel anything in after my first session and after my second session i felt a little bit different but i will um talk about this um later on because um after my third session um directly after that i didn't feel anything but on the next day I had a rehearsal with a concerto, which I had to play from memory. Um, I also have a clip on Instagram um, where I'm playing it, uh, so if you want to watch it. Um, uh, but I had a rehearsal one week before that with uh, a companist and I was playing it I think the second time totally from memory and it was just a piece that I had shortly memorized, I just had one week to memorize the whole concerto, which was very, very fast for me, um, but I managed to do it and um, I had this rehearsal with a pianist. So I was showing up to the rehearsal and I knew that I would need my score for sure. First try I wanted to play from memory. And when I played the piece from memory, I think on the second page already or in the third page I had a mistake which was a pedal mistake and previously when I had a mistake which was a pedal mistake or um, I like slipped off the string or anything happened I couldn't see my score in front of my inner eye I'm a very visual person and when I'm playing by memory, I always see the score in front of my inner eyes. That's my orientation. And of course, I know what the, what the notes are um, by heart, but I also see the score in my inner eye. And when I, before, when I did a mistake, the score was completely gone. Um, or I could not see the exact bar where I was in. I could see something later on but it was not there and I did a mistake and I still could see the score in front of my inner eye and that was so surprising to me because I never experienced that I had the score in my inner eye when I did a mistake. I always had to jump somewhere else or do something and when I played this concerto I had a few more mistakes but I felt no panic when I did a mistake and the score was still in front of my inner eyes. That was so life-changing to me that I just felt, I felt inner peace and I was just thinking, oh, I did an A flat instead of an A natural or something. Um, you can hear that I did an A flat, just put the A natural in there. And I did it and I came out of the mistake and everything was good. I didn't panic, I didn't have 1000 questions in my head what happened. It was just that I was calm and I could really analyze what happened and that was nothing that I experienced before. And this was really, really life changing for me. That was after my third session and we worked after my fourth session and fifth session also on different things, but there were not as 
life-changing to me as the second and the third session now and I really want to explain what we did but it's very personal and I thought about it for a longer time if I'm going to share with the internet on what we worked but I think that you can understand how the sessions worked I have to explain on my own, um, I will not overshare here, but um, what we did and how it influenced that I did not experience any panic afterwards. In the third session, um, she was working with me on one belief and the belief was I am not good enough. And I had this belief for a long time. And every time um, we did a session, she was asking me, where's my past and where's my future? Where do I see it? And um, then normally I was closing my eyes and then she was just asking me, yeah, when was the first time you can think of that you felt this feeling of you are not good enough? And I was thinking about, I think one event when I was 18 or 17 so um, I was telling her about this event, then she was doing something with her fingers and I had to follow her fingers. And um, while following her fingers, the feeling that I felt of I'm not good enough went down. And I had to get this feeling back up and I had to follow her fingers until I couldn't really feel this feeling anymore. It was quite hard to like get this feeling back after um, you had to follow her fingers. For me, I had to close my eyes again and then she was asking me the, now ask your unconscious self if there was a time before that event where you also experienced that feeling. And exactly in this second, another event came into my mind, which I forgot already when I was 14. And it was exactly in that second. It was so scary. It was really so scary that it was exactly in that second. And so we worked also on this event. She was asking me the same question again. And then my mind jumped again to another experience I had during my studies where a teacher of mine said something to me which I would now consider as totally inappropriate and not pedagogical and not nice and kind of traumatizing. I know that this teacher only meant the best for me but she couldn't really express that and what she said was uh, not nice. And I could always hear what she was saying in my head. I had like a blurry image of the situation, how it was, but I could always hear her voice saying this over and over again. And this like really influenced myself much that I was still able to like hear her saying this um, bad thing about me. And I told the hypnotherapist about it that instead of like the other situations where I was just seeing an image, I could only hear her um, talking and saying these um, sentences to me. And then she was working on me on this. So I had to um, hear it in double speed and I had to um, put it on like a CD and burn it and stuff. And on the next day, I can't access her voice anymore. So basically now, also now when I'm trying to think of what she said to me, I can't remember. I can't access that. It's just like, like a very dumb, dark place in my brain. And even if I try really hard to think of like the exact voice and the exact words that she said to me, I can't access this memory anymore. And that's so scary, but also so life-changing because it happened and it's just stored somewhere else. And the hypnotherapist told me that she's trying to put things that are still in my short-term memory in my long-term memory and things that were very traumatizing um, also in my long-term memory. So I will not really be able to like access them so much. Um, and that it's not bothering me anymore. And I can now say that I can't hear her voice anymore. And I don't know anymore what she said. I just know that it was not nice. It was inappropriate, but I can't 
access this memory anymore which was just life-changing to me we worked on this belief so much and i think it's that belief that like throw me up a lot of the times when i had to play in front um of people and in front of um especially with memory where you have to be like very concentrated and in the uh, second session we worked on um being criticized um i know that as a musician you are being criticized all the time when a person i value their opinion very much and they were criticizing me i needed at least three times to recover from this critique i got criticized after my i think third session from a person where i value the opinion very much and it was not a nice conversation we had it was also about my playing but i heard it but i didn't feel it and I know that's very weird, but I always felt critique here very deeply in my heart. When they criticized me, I always felt terribly bad, as if somebody died. And now I just heard the critique and I was just thinking, okay, cool. They're criticizing me, I can take the critique and do with it what I want. And I accepted the critique and I worked on it, but it was so much easier to work with this critique now that I was not emotionally so involved and it was so much easier to go on from this state and like very like work in a professional way with critique, which was also very life changing for me. In the fourth and in the fifth sessions, we worked on um, other things that were very important for my personal life, but not so much for my playing. But in total, I have to say that in my final recital, which was, I think, the biggest recital I had to play after I had the hypnotherapy sessions, I was not that nervous. Um, and also the other times I had to play, I had not this feeling of having to throw up, getting sick on stage having shaky hands, having the feeling that I'm going to die on stage. And also when I made a mistake, it was okay. It was, I didn't experience the panic I felt before. Also while playing, I didn't have to calm myself down so much. So before I went on stage and I played and I had to calm myself down while I was playing. I was just telling myself, Vanessa, please keep control. I always had the feeling of losing control, not having control over my body, especially about my feet. I was always watching myself playing. I never had really the control or the time to listen what I was playing. I was just occupied with calming myself down that I'm not going to die, everything is okay. Um, and um, I will survive these, I don't know, 45 minutes where I have to play by memory. And now I'm just thinking that somebody who has never experienced this panic or this state of having panic on stage, being in the stage while playing, can never understand how people are feeling when they are having panic stage fright. They will never understand in what emotional state you are while playing. And it's easy for them to say, oh, you didn't know the scores enough or you didn't put enough work in because they just see the result of how you play and not how you were feeling while you played and also not what preparation you did. I still make mistakes. I'm not a player who does no mistakes. And I really admire the people who are playing without mistakes, but I'm just not somebody who is able to play without mistakes through. But it's so much easier for me now to concentrate and listen to the music I'm playing. I have now to adjust myself to this new feeling that I have on stage. I'm not experiencing this panic, having my score there. And I'm really looking forward to like work with this new state of emotions while playing. And I think it really benefited all over 
my professional life as a harpist. Would I recommend it to anybody? Yes. It really changed my life and I can't thank this hypnotherapist enough um, who got me in this other state of feelings while playing. And also for my personal life, I would say three sessions were for my playing and the other two sessions we worked on things that are still important for playing, but um, that helped me in my personal life so much that I can just say, of course, it's very expensive and it might not work for everybody, but I think if it helps you, it's not expensive. And um, I'm very, very happy that I tried it and I can just recommend to do it if you have the same problems as I have. Um, and uh, one last thing I wanted to mention is that I did not think that I am panicking on stage before. So basically I thought that I was just experiencing nervousness and I thought it's totally normal because everybody is talking about being nervous. But what I was experiencing was not being nervous, it was panic. And I think there is a difference between these two. But because I never in my life had a panic attack, didn't really knew if it was panic or not, but it was panic uh, that I experienced now on stage because now I can really difference between being nervous, having panic on stage and making a mistake um, and how your state of mind is different in these situations. I know this video was a little bit longer, but I still hope it was very interesting for you. Please subscribe to my channel that you don't miss any further videos and I will see you in my next video. Bye!